welcome again to today's class. In today's class, we want to discuss experiment on application of moments. Yes. So it has this objective to determine the mass and density of a metal room using the principle of moment. Apparatus, mass, metal room, knife edge, calorie metal filled with water and vernier caliper. Now, look at the sketch of the diagram. Look at the procedure. The procedure says, place the knife edge at 5.0 cm from the center of gravity you obtained initially. That means, first thing you have to do is to get your metal room, keep it on a knife edge, and note your word, center of gravity. Please note that the center of gravity has range. And so the range could be between 48 to what 52 cm, depending on the meter rule you are using. Are you getting it? 48 to 52 cm. So first thing you do is to get your center of gravity. Once you get it, you note it. That is one. Then the mass M provided at the other side of the knife edge. So when you get your center of gravity, if your center of gravity is 50, that means the meter rule balance at 50 dots at the 50. That means here will be 50, this center will be 50. And you now measure from 50 to this point. That will be your five. The place you now put your knife edge again will be five cm. That the distance from this center of gravity to the point you place your knife edge is five cm. So that means if you place it here to be five cm, the remaining side will be what? 45 cm. That means from here, knife edge to the end is 45 cm. Now, as you place your mass at the end of the meter room, as you hang your mass at the end of the meter room, it will not balance. You are the one to now be shifting that mass you hang here. You have to be shifting it, shifting it till it keeps this meter room at equilibrium. It keeps it balanced without shaking anymore. So that is what they mean by adjust the position of the mass M while maintaining the position of the knife edge until you obtain a new balance point. Record the distance between the CG. Record the distance between the CG and knife edge as D1. D1, that is from 50 to this knife edge as D1, that is 5, is constant. And the distance between the knife edge and the mass M, the knife edge and the new position of that mass M that make it to be balanced. You note it as your D2. And so, you repeat the procedure for D1 equal to 7.5, 10.0, 12.5. That is what you have here. That means this your D1 will be constant. Then, also, Repeat the entire experiment with the mass M completely immersed in water. When we are now immersing it in water, that is about this second diagram. That means we have to talk about density of thrust and all our view while discussing this part. And record the corresponding distance as D3. Okay. Now see what we do. From the principle of moment of forces, we noted that CG, that center of gravity, simply means the point at which the weight of that metal rule will act. The point at which the weight of the metal rule will act. Now, this metal rule that is 100 cm, mass of a metal rule, mass of 100 centimeter rule, falls between 95 to what? 105 gram. Mass of 100 centimeter rule falls between 95 to 105 gram, depending on how light, how heavy, how stiff, 
how flexible that metal rule is. Are you getting it? Okay. Having noted this, having noted this, if we are going by this now, from the rule of moment, we will say that the weight of this metal rule, we will take it in terms of mass. That means weight divided by G is mass, right? We'll call here to be, we are taking here to be 100 gram. 100 gram. If we are taking here to be 100 gram, that means it is accurate. Okay, because we, let's, let's assume that it's not 100 gram. Let's take 98 gram. Let's say that the weight of this, the mass of this metal rule, that 100 metal rule is 98, because we say it's ranging between 95 to what? 105 gram. And so, if here is 98 gram, and the distance between here and here is 5. Now, this distance, we don't know it, but the mass we hang on it is 100 gram. Where is it? The mass of the steel. Here is 100 watt gram. We call it mass of the steel. Because the mass we use in the physics lab, most time is in a steel form. In a steel form. Something like this is in a steel form. Still. Okay? And so, we now say, whatever is the position of this here, whether it is at the end or at the before the end, whatever is the position of this, the truth is that this mass cannot come to this side. This mass cannot come to this side to keep this body at equilibrium. That is just the truth. So, whichever part, whichever side it hang, will note it as our D2. And so that will take you to the formula that D2 is equals to what? D2 is equals to 98 times D1 all over the mass of the steel. Mass of the steel. So we have given several uh, values for D1. All we need to do is that we put it here. 98 times what? 5. All over 100. We we'll use it to get here. We we'll also do it likewise. 98 times 7.5. All over 100. We we'll do the one on 7.5. We'll do it again. 98 times what? 10 all over 100 we'll get this 10 on we we'll also say 98 times what 12.5 all over 100 we we'll get this 12.5 on 98 times 15 all over 100 we we'll get this 15 on you get it then we we'll press it in our calculator 98 times 5 Divided by 100, that is 4.9. This one will give us 4.9. We'll write 4.90. 98 times 7.5. Divided by 100. 7.4. 7.40 approximately. So we are approximating it to one decimal place because the meter room, the distance you have to get here can only be in one decimal place. It shouldn't be in two decimal places. Either it is as a whole number or it is in one decimal place because the reading accuracy of a meter room is one decimal place. That is 0 0.1 cm. Are you getting it? Okay. This one, 98 times 7.5. Okay, 98 times 10 divided by 100. 9.8. We have it as 9.8. Okay, and so we now say 98 times 12.5.
divided by 100. 12.3 98 times 15 divided by 100 14.7 we have gotten our d2 the table for d2 okay using this so this is about your d2 the first d2 the second d2 the third d2 the fourth D2 and the fifth D2. Now, how do we get our D3? How do we get our D3? The D3 make use of what? You immersing that mass in water. And there are a lot of things we need to consider here. One, relative density, density, up thrust, and all have you. And so first thing we will check is relative density. Relative density of the steel is equal to mass of steel, mass of steel in air all over mass of equal volume of water. Or all over all over mass of water displaced. First of all, get the mass of that steel. When you get the mass of that steel, that is what we call the Eureka can. The Eureka can. The sketch of it goes this way. So what you do with that Eureka can is you want to get the volume of water displaced. Let's say this to be the Eureka can. You fill it with water to this point. Then, when you fill it with water to this point, you carry this steel, put it inside here. When you put it inside here, it will displace some water molecule. And when it displaces some water molecule, some of those water will come and what? Enter here. So you use this container to collect that water it displays. Now this water it displays, get the volume. Whatever is the volume of this water, assuming that the volume is 10 cm cube. Assuming that the volume of this water is 10 cm cube. Tell them that 10 cm cube is equivalent of 10 gram. Is equivalent to 10 gram. That is about 10 cm cube. The reason is because 1 cm cube is equal to 1 gram. That is what you now put as your denominator. So when you get the mass of steel in air using beam balance, chemical balance, you divide it with what? Mass of water displaced using Eureka can, for instance. And when you get the mass of water displaced, you now convert it to mass. When you get the volume of water displaced, you convert it to mass by saying that one cm cube is equal to one gram. You get it. So that means this is formula number one. We are, or we need to make use of while sorting this. Then, after knowing about relative density, it is also important to note that up thrust, Up thrust, you have been hearing about up thrust. Up thrust of substance in water. Up thrust of substance in water is equal to weight of water displaced. Weight of water displaced. And is also equal to mass of water displaced times G. Mass of what? Water displaced times acceleration due to gravity. Because mass times G is weight. Okay? So we have to note that because we are going to formula derivation. Now, mass of Comparing this with what this, we will now say that 
mass of water displaced is equal to upthrust up thrust of substance in water all over G. Remember here we said this times G, right? Times G. Let's write it well. So, mass of water displaced times G is equal to up thrust of substance in water. And so, mass of water displaced will now be up thrust of substance in water divided by G. We have to note that formula. Okay? Up thrust of substance in water times G. Now, we want to note another formula. Weight of substance in water. When you carry a substance and you put it inside water, Let's say the water weighs 10 grams or 10 newton in air. It weighs 10 newton in air. When you put it inside water, will the weight be 10 newton? If you check the weight using spring balance, will it still be 10 newton? The answer is no because of off thrust. You have to lose some weight to that fluid because it must display some volume, some space. And so what we do here is we now record the weight of substance in water. Weight of substance in water. So we now record that weight of substance in water. Weight. Weight of substance in water is equal to. Weight of substance in air is equal to weight of the substance in air. Weight of the substance in air minus minus weight of water displaced. So, weight of substance in water is equal to weight in air minus weight of, uh, weight of water displaced, okay? And so, when you divide weight of substance in water by G, divide this one by G, divide this one by G, you'll be getting mass of substance in water. equals to mass of substance in air minus mass of water displaced. Are you getting it? So everything will turn to mass. Okay? Everything will now turn to mass automatically. Yes. And when you get to this, when you get to this, there is something you need to do here. There is something you need to do here. Recall that mass of water displaced is equal to up thrust of substance in water all over G. So this will now give you mass of substance in water equals to what is the mass of substance in air? The mass is 100 grams. 100 gram minus up thrust of substance in water all over a water all over G. Okay. So mass of substance in water equal to 100 gram minus up thrust of substance in water all over G. Because mass of water displaced is equal to what? Up thrust of substance in water over G. Right? Now when you get to this point, you remember that density, density of a substance all over density in water. 
is equal to weight of the substance in air, weight in air, all over up thrust in water. Yes. How can we get our weight in air? And how can we get our up thrust in water? Note that density of substance. What substance are we talking about? We call it a steel. The substance that steel we use in performing experiment in the laboratory. It has a range of value. Its density has a range of value. Density of it is this range to what? 8050 in kilogram per meter watt cube. Then in kilogram per centimeter, in gram per centimeter cube, you divide by 1000, 7.75 to what? 8.05 gram per centimeter cube. This is about the range of values of that word steel. Depending on how dense that steel is, that will determine whether it will have a higher value or a smaller value. And so, let's pick this 8.05 as the density of the steel given to us. Now, taking that 8.05 as density of the steel, that means the substance we'll be talking about here is steel. That means the substance we'll be talking about is steel, density of steel. We will now remove substance and put steel. Density in water, because we are using gram per cm cube, we will be using all over 1 gram per centimeter cube, is constant. Then weight of steel in air, weight of steel in air, weight in air is equal to, weight of steel is in air equal to the mass, which is equal to 100 watt gram times what? Times acceleration due to gravity, which is 980 centimeter per second square. So that will be giving you 98123 gram centimeter all over second square. Okay? We now put it here. We now say that 8.05 all over 1 gram per cm cube. Density of water is 1 gram per cm cube. Is equal to weight in air 98123 all over up thrust up thrust in water. Therefore, up thrust in water is equal to what? In water equals to one times this 98123 all over 8.05. 8.05 and so when you compute this you will be getting 12173 gram cm over second squared that is the value of up thrust in water but remember mass of substance in water is what we have been working around to see if we can get it mass of substance in water Mass of substance in water equals to 100 gram, which is the mass of that substance in air given to us, minus the up thrust is 12173 all over 908 because the acceleration due to gravity is 98 in terms of centimeter per second square. And when you compute this, it will be giving you about 12 points to be giving you a value when you compute this so we have 100 minus bracket 12173 Divided by 98. That will be giving you 
87.6 gram. That will be giving you 87.6. That is my soft substance. That means when you amass this substance in water, the mass you are to get will be what? 87.6 gram. And that will take us to how to get D3. We now say our D3 will now be equal to this mass of the meter rule D1 times mass of the meter rule, which we take to be 98. We took mass of the meter rule to be 98 because we say it runs between 95 to 105. That is what we said all over the density, um, all over the mass of substance in water, that is uh, 87.6. So that is the formula we use. We'll put five there. When you say five times 98, divided by 87.5, that will be giving you, that means the first value is 5.6 cm, Five point six zero cm. How did we get it? Five times ninety-eight all over eighty-seven point six. That means ordinary. As I want to run this video, I suppose to say mass of substances water is equal to eighty-seven point six gram. And some persons will say, how? How did we get it? That is why we are following the laws of what relative density of thrust, density of the substance to see how we can get it. Then this one, 7.5 times 98 all over 87.6. 7.5 times 98 divided by 87.6. That will be giving you 8.40 right you do the next one 10 times 98 divided by 87.6 10 times 98 divided by 87.6 11.2 you also do 12.5 times 98 divided by what? Divided by 87.6. That will be giving you 14.00. And you finally do 15 times 98 divided by 87.6. That will be giving you 16.80 okay so we have seen how to get our table of values for this experiment now we want to go into graph plotting we want to go into graph plotting now